I'm Brian Lilly. Why can't some people just call it terrorism? That is the topic of tonight's byline. Two attacks last week against Canadian soldiers by radical Muslims with political and religious motivations for both attacks. One of those attacks included shooting up Parliament, and yet some people still can't call it terrorism. I'm not saying they can't call it Muslim terrorism or Islamic terrorism, like that book we told you about warns media outlets against doing. No, they just can't call it terrorism at all. Today marks one week since Michael Zihaf Bibo shot Na Corporal Nathan Cirillo, then barged into the Parliament buildings, firing shots from his rifle as MPs, the Prime Minister included, sat feet away in their caucus meetings. So to mark the first caucus meeting since the terrorist attack, the Canadian press put out a story explaining how security is beefed up, but MPs will be understandably nervous. Writer Bruce Cheadle then puts this description in the third paragraph. It has been six days since a rifle-toting, homeless drug addict with a grudge against government burst through the center block's front doors and careened down the central hall of honor before dying in a hail of bullets. Excuse me? Excuse me? A rifle-toting, homeless drug addict with a grudge against government? What the hell is that? Yes, he had a rifle, but can we say he was a drug addict? He used to be. Was he still one? We don't know. Was he homeless? Yes, but apparently by choice of late. According to the RCMP statement issued on the weekend, Zihaf Bibo had plenty of money in his bank account, money he made while working in the oil patch in Alberta. We have identified the source of funds for Zihaf Bibo's pre-attack activities. Zihaf Bibo had been employed in the oil fields of Alberta and had saved his money. He had access to a considerable amount of funds. We are investigating all of his disbursements in the period leading up to the attack. So the homeless angle is really a red herring here. He had a grudge against government, Cheeto writes. What, what's he getting at here? That tells us nothing. Was, was Zihaf Bibo an angry libertarian? Was he a tea parter? Because uh, that's the type of language used for right-wing groups. Is Cheeto trying to paint Zihaf Bibo as some crazed right-winger? I'm not sure, but Cheeto sure as hell isn't painting him as a terrorist, Islamic or otherwise. Cheeto does make a brief mention of him being an Islamic convert, but he doesn't call him a terrorist or link his grudge against government to his faith or political viewpoints. Again, from the RCMP statement, the RCMP has identified persuasive evidence that Michael Zihaf Bibo's attack was driven by ideological and political motives. Zihaf Bibo had prepared a video recording of himself just prior to conducting this attack. In comments to the Media Monday, RCMP Commissioner Bob Paulson was a little more specific. But he was, uh, he was uh, quite deliberate, he was quite lucid, and he was quite purposeful in articulating uh, the, the basis for his action. Oh, but don't tell that to Bruce Cheadle at the Canadian press. He still won't call this terrorism. Then again, neither will NDP leader Tom Mulcair. Government, the Secretary of State John Kerry, the RCMP have all labeled the events as terrorism. Do you? No. Why not? I, because I don't think that we have enough evidence to use that word. Hmm. Mulcair then goes on to talk about his mental condition, that he might have been mentally ill. It's amazing to watch Mulcair, Cheadle, and others diagnose a dead man, put conditions on him that they can't actually confirm. I'm not going to deny that the guy may have had problems, but shooting a soldier at a national monument and shooting up parliament is a terrorist act. Running down two soldiers, killing one, and then declaring, I'm doing this in the name of Allah, that is a terrorist act. But some people inside the Ottawa bubble don't get that. People like Rosemary Barton of CBC. Here she is on Power in Politics. It's interesting because the definition of terrorism right. has sort of, you know, is sort of changing in a way, right? To include someone who may be acting alone, who may or may not have been incited by others, but who clearly had uh, some attachment to extremism or radicalism. Where does she get this dang bad idea? This is not the changing of the definition of terrorism. As I showed you last week in the 1986 edition of the Little Oxford Dictionary, it shows a clear definition of terrorism, and it hasn't changed. And last week's attacks qualify. The definition, terrorism, practice of using violent and intimidating methods, especially to secure political ends. Both of the attacks meet that definition, but Barton, Cheadle, Mulcair, none of them can or want to see that. This is the Ottawa bubble, folks. There are lots more people that think like them here. They live through this and still can't see a terrorist act for what it is. You know who can? Normal Canadians. 
when you saw what was going down in Ottawa that this is a terrorist attack? Definitely. I guess it's pretty hard to face the reality because we've never had this to deal with before that I can ever remember. When you saw what was happening, do you see this as a terrorist attack? Oh, certainly I do. Yes, it's, it, it, and we've seen that coming. Normal people get it, even if Barton and others don't. And just because I throw enough criticism at CBC, let me point out that while Barton doesn't like the terrorist label, CBC's chief anchor, Peter Mansbridge, is at least willing to use the word terror. Homegrown terror strikes at home. Mansbridge has used that word more than once. You know who else is using it now? Liberal leader, Justin Trudeau. First of all, the RCMP was clear these were acts of terrorism. These were acts of terrorism. Even the Obama administration, the people that won't call Fort Hood a terrorist act, said that last week's attacks clearly were terrorist acts. Anybody who walks up in a premeditated way with a rifle uh, and attacks somebody in uniform and then purposefully goes to a parliament uh, is, conduct, is, is, is committing, by common sense standards, a terrorist act. I can't say for sure why so many in the media and political circles won't call these attacks terrorism, but I can speculate. It's Islam. Islam and their own far-left political leanings. The left is iffy on issues like terrorism, but they're clear on Islam. To them, it is always a religion of peace. So you've got lefties that don't like terms like terrorism to begin with, trying to grapple with two people carrying out terrorist acts in the name of Islam. Let me point this out. If these were IRA attacks, the perps would be identified as Catholic and terrorists right away. But in this case, the left can't do that. And because both perps are Muslim, they avoid the terror word to protect their own image of the faith, to keep their own multicultural kumbaya worldview intact. I've said from the beginning, you need to speak clearly. And being able to name what you are dealing with, what you are fighting, that is essential. Some folks can't do that. We can do that. We will continue to do that, regardless of the other's weak-willed viewpoint. And that's the byline.